Hello and welcome to the Talking Locks with Lockitude podcast. My name is Adi Balogun. And this is the first episode of 2023, even though we're in the last quarter of the year. Today, we're starting a new series, which um, is going to be titled Lock Convos. Actually, no, Chair Convos. This is inspired by the conversations we have on the chair when you come and get your hair done at Lockitude. I get to meet a lot of fantastic people on a day-to-day basis. And today, a BSA has honored me with his presence. Hello. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining me today. We're going to be having conversations like we normally do when you come to get your hair done. The ideal state of this podcast in the future would be that the conversation will be on the actual chair. But I promise the audience that we are sitting on chairs right now, we on are. one chair actually. Can confirm. On the couch. And uh, we're going to have an interesting conversation. So let's see, where do we start? For the sake of the people that don't know you yet, can you tell me just a little bit about yourself? Or let me start actually. A BSA is a data annotator an avid rollerblader or roller skater, an instrumentalist, a music writer, a vocalist, a rapper, a singer. So we're going to be going all over the place. So, well, you want to tell me more now that I've outed you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I, that, that list sounded so long when you said it out that I was like, am I really all those things? But I mean, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I do rollerblade a lot. Uh, I'm a data annotator, which is not too fancy, but I do enjoy the freedom because i do work from home so i have a lot of time to go skate um i can you know jump away from work to go make some music if i want to if i get an idea i can just go right uh so that's nice so i spend most of my days just um you know i work in the morning find some time in the middle of the day maybe go on a hike rollerblade uh sing right all all the above and that's that's a that's a bsa that's what i do it seems to like have the perfect life right now. You know, you might, you, I, I would like to feel, think so. I'm grateful for what I do have, but, um, but there's more to be, to I be know. sorted, you know. What, it, what are we if we don't want more? Mm. Um, but let's start. What's a data annotator? What does that even mean? Like those fancy Ooh. tech words. Yeah, it's a, that's exactly what it is. A fancy tech word because in my, in actual practice, uh, all I'm doing is, taking a whole bunch of raw data that's uh, in my case is gathered from um, users like talking to a chat bot uh, that I'm essentially taking not only what the users might have typed in, but also some of uh, what the chat bots, chat bots responses were um, and essentially annotating word for word uh, what certain words are in relation to a taxonomy that, we have at the company I move I work with, which is called MoveWorks, by the way, um, and we're kind of playing a, a game of uh, Tetris or like um, fit the shape in this hole kind of thing, where we have a big old taxonomy. We're taking a bunch of raw data and we're applying that taxonomy to train our train our bot to just be a, a little bit better with uh, natural language. Okay, let me see if I understood what you said. We're trying to understand what's people like you and I say that are not computers so that the computer knows how to respond properly? Yeah, so they, exactly. They, they really want to know, they want to train this this uh, this this model to understand natural language a bit better. Um, and that only happens through just droves and droves of data and a bunch of people um, giving basically their input to this model that's taking in all this information and trying to whip it back out later to produce language that seems very natural, like uh, like ChatGPT or something like that, which has gone above and beyond, you know. It sounds like interesting and complex. I'm, I'm struggling to follow, so I'm not going to try to show how much more <laughs> <laughs> smart I am. But let's talk about your hair for a second. How yeah. long have you had locks now? Ooh, so I've had locks since... 2008 yeah if we, okay yeah you know if, if we do some quick maths what's that uh uh 16 <laughs> years about i think 16 years yeah just about is it is that a, no Two, hold on wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's at our 10 we're in t- uh, 2018 two more so 20, 19 20, 20, 20 15. 21 22 15 years yeah, 15 years yeah. now 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> Some math whizzes at home are very... Do you know I never would have guessed because I started my locks in 2009. Oh, wow. So I would have thought that I've been in this game way before you, but uh. apparently... Well, that's a good one. You know, it's in two thousand and eight, you must have been very young. And yeah, why did you decide to get locks? Um, I think I was in. I know I was very young because I was definitely in middle school. And the my sister is the one who brought it up as a as a thing at the at the beginning. Um, I have two sisters, so my sister Sefe is the one who brought it up. Um, like, oh, you should get dreads, you know. And I kind of you locked it <laughs> off. I wasn't really thinking about it. Until we went to uh, her high school to see some show or something going on. There was one teacher that had these really long locks that I saw them and I was like, whoa, those are cool. And I think I want them, you know, and I asked her, are those dreads? And she was like, yeah, those are dreads. Got home that night and I was like, I think I want some. My other sister, RSA, she uh, went ahead and started them for me, I think the next day or within two days after that. Um, And the rest is history, you know. Hmm. So no, no special reason for getting them initially, but um, I'm very glad I've kept them for this long. That's that's very interesting. And look at the freedom. So on my side, I grew up in Nigeria, and in 2009, when I said my locks, I had already finished my masters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, exactly. I had finished. Yeah. I had completed my master's degree Mm -hmm. and my mom was still not on board with it. So I'm thinking like in middle school, Mm -hmm. how did you get away with locking your hair (laughs) as a Nigerian? First, do you even identify as a Nigerian? I absolutely do. But there might be a a wider story on that (laughs) if you want that right now. Okay, Um, let's let's get into it. Because it is a tentative. I I definitely do. Um, And I was actually, when I was younger, I was more forward about that. If okay. someone asked me where I was from or or what I am, anything like that, my answer was plain, plain and simple, Nigerian. Mm-hmm. Um, I only questioned that answer when I was amongst my own family um, and I was asked that question, how do you identify? And I said Nigerian. They were surprised to hear me say that, you know, knowing that I was born here, I grew up here for the most part. Um, and while that didn't change my I, like how I view myself, because I, I do know that Nigerian values are a large part of how I find myself navigating the world um, and what always felt like a slight difference between myself and some of my peers in terms of just how we look at certain situations. Um, so I, that, that remained. However, when my own family is now saying, oh, but, you know, you're American, you're, you know, I'm like, well, you know, you have a point. By the time I go there, too, I, I realize I don't quite fit in here either. You know, it's not the same situation. So I, I wonder what the conversation was at the house door in 2008, in middle school. Mm-hmm. And then your sister puts locks in your hair and you have your Nigerian mother at home. Mm. And when she saw it, what did she say? She... At first, she was not very happy with it. Okay. Now, mind you... You are Nigerian. (laughs) She was not very happy with it at first. But mind you, it didn't feel... When she had an issue with it, it didn't feel like um, they are locks and therefore they are bad. It felt more like they're short and they look bad. So take them out, you know. Okay. They... uh, you know, in the same way, walking around middle school at that time, I had very <laughs> tiny locks. I was I was made fun of for having, they called my hair burnt Cheetos back then. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I just told him, I was like, give me like five years. Um, and that's what it took because even in five years time, even my mom had turned around. By the time it got a little longer, she was like, oh, mm. they're, they're, they're nice. You know, I like them. Um, nowadays, she's now flipped around and is saying they're too long now. Um, but when they were in a nice sweet spot, she was actually, she was, she, she was, was okay with she them. Was okay with it. Do you think you ever cut them off? Eventually. Eventually. I, I have that plotted out for some distant point in my life where I need a, a paradigm shift in my life, you know? Fair enough. That, Cause I know it would, it's the type of thing that would cause that. Cause even getting them was a very shifting point in my life. I would say. Yeah, well, like you already know, I did. When you met me, did I have long hair? You did, yes, yes. Yeah, so I did cut my hair short and Mm -hmm. um, I'm loving it right now. Mm -hmm. And I I don't know if I would ever cut them 
all off, mm -hmm. but I, I like where they are. I like what they're doing for me. Mm -hmm. They're giving me exactly what I want in mm -hmm. this moment. Um, let's go back to AI. So you sound like you are AI yourself. You are a data annotator. You're teaching the computer how to understand people's language in tech, tech, taxonomy. Mm -hmm. What is the thing you put it in? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. The, the taxonomy, just like like a little dictionary that's like... Exactly. So you company. are the one who is selling us to the rest of the... <laughs> selling <laughs> us to the machines. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I definitely have a hand in it. You know, I can't, I can't just, you know, walk away and be like, oh, the engineers are actually the ones doing it. Because then they could turn around and be like, no, it's the business execs who are selling the product. And like, um, but on the opposite end of things, I don't think that it, whether or not I quit this job, it's coming for us. We can't, we cannot stop the AI. It's on uh, the way. Does it scare you though? Do you think that you're going to give the computer, I keep on saying the computer because that's what I can think of it as. Mm -hmm. You're going to give AI so much information and teach it so much that maybe your role will not be required anymore? Hmm. That that point can come, but I, I'm not sure that it's going to come in a way that that's surprising, if that makes any sense. Like, there, th there's not going to be some sudden stop point where, oh, we just don't need any more data. And, mm -hmm. you know, unless it comes to the point where the AI is now annotating its own data, which which it already is, actually, to this point. But interestingly enough, to even have it do more of those things, we now need another layer of people um, annotating data so that it can annotate data, if that makes any <laughs> sense. You know, we have to now train a model to do what we're doing. At some point, there's some human doing something um, to help the bot at it. Now, I think what changes is how many people are actually needed to do that. And I've already seen my like my the company is whittled down a bit because mm -hmm. um, I personally I'm a contractor with MoveWorks um, and so we technically are you know we're we're, we're uh, third party contractors basically okay um, and it's it's pretty common for a whole bunch of people to just get swiped off suddenly the smart because, ad system gets yeah it's just it's just uh it's just we don't need as much data anymore the system's pretty stable. Um, I don't know a lot of the details, honestly, but I do know that as it gets better and as there's less uh, fluctuation in, in in its actual habits and like results, then the less we need, you know, droves of data for this particular model, unless there's been some grand shift in how it should yeah. understand language. But I think being humans, there's going to be some shift. There's always a shift. We're always evolving. Mm -hmm. um, so um, um, I was very skeptical in the beginning when, you know, AI and all of the stuff that are coming up, like chat GPT. I was like, it's the devil. I don't want it on my <laughs> phone. It's going to track me. Mm -hmm. And um, I have started using chat GPT. Oh, yeah. For some basic task. It has been very helpful. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to make me stupid, but actually it makes me look really smart. Yeah. So I, I kind of like it for some things. And I think you're right. AI, AI is here to stay. And if we think about it, there's been shifts in technology where, you know, new inventions came and you felt like it killed some industry. Like mm -hmm. the newspaper industry has been killed by Facebook. Absolutely. Let's say it that way. <laughs> But however, millions of people have probably gotten jobs because of Facebook. Absolutely. Yeah. So I don't know however many years back you could have looked at it and said, you're killing the whole industry. You're going to put mm -hmm. X amount of people out of work. There's a whole industry that survives on newspapers. Mm -hmm. But right now they are data annotators, mm -hmm. engineers, architects, software, all sorts of roles that do not exist. Exactly. So if we think about it, AI might just be positive for the future yeah i i think so i, I think way more positive than like like the, the, it's one thing if uh something like facebook is killing newspapers but like ai as a as a concept if 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 it takes off the way that conceptually it can i it, it could really just change how the, the ease of life for everybody all over the world you know in the same way, it's making, uh, I'm actually curious what kind of things you would use uh, ChatGPT for because I haven't <laughs> really used it for my uh, my own purposes just yet. Okay, so I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> um, so I do have a day job and um, I use ChatGPT to kind of to see what's out there. Like I've been having a struggling with adoption of some of the concepts that my role 
um, enforces for my company. And I basically asked ChatGPT, what are the challenges of adopting Agile? Oh, okay. And I get a whole list and there are some I can identify and narrow down and mm-hmm. say, okay. Um, I do a lot of facilitation, which leads me to facilitating a lot of meetings. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I know the message I want to get across. I know I want to be able to um, coach people based off of maybe visu- visualization of their work or like agile concepts. And I ask, cha- I ask um, chat GPC, can you help me with an agenda mm-hmm. for this meeting? Mm-hmm. You know, I need it to be two hours long and mm-hmm. this is the message I'm trying to come acro- cut across. And it gives me a list of 15 things. Mm-hmm. And at the very list, it gives me ideas. Mm-hmm. So I can say, oh, actually, I wouldn't have talked about this, but this is an important part mm-hmm. of the conversation. So it helps. It also helps with things like roadmaps. So I'm like mm-hmm. trying to put together a strategy. And based off of the information it has, I can say, hey, um, can you help me with a roadmap mm-hmm. <laughs> on X? And it actually lists out a few things and mm-hmm. it, it gives me a good foundation to start right. the work. Um, when I started using ChatGPT for work, I felt like I was cheating because uh, I was yeah. like, I was supposed to sit down and brainstorm about mm-hmm. what I wanted to do. And now ChatGPT has done the brainstorming right, right. for me. But I realized I still need to brainstorm. And in cases where I've used it, I still need to put together the presentation. And even when ChatGPT is drawing out a roadmap for me, I still have to implement the roadmap. So it it makes me faster, more intuitive. But I also fear that there might be some, if you're not careful and you're just 100% reliant on the information that you get from ChatGPT, Mm -hmm. like we've seen in several cases, I believe there are lawyers who have cited wrong cases. Mm -hmm. There are students who are using it for dissertations and they're not, Mm -hmm. you know, doing the work. You can get misled, but if you take that information, it's a good foundation for a lot of things. That makes a lot of sense. So rather than, you know, like some random student using it who might just rip the page and, and just plagiarize. Yeah. You, know, you take that information and you actually synthesize it into whatever yeah. your game plan is. If you think about it, it's research because it's just saved me the time I would have probably gone on Google mm-hmm. <laughs> to look for the same information no, exactly, and try exactly. to put it together. That makes way more sense to me. Yeah. yeah. Like like using a calculator, honestly, instead of doing stuff in your head. Exactly. It. That makes so, a lot of sense. So it, it feels less and less like cheating. and But at some point I'm like, when is my boss going to realize that she could just prompt chat GPT and say, hey, I don't need any for all this work anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, feel, I feel like the human resource is still pretty powerful. She's still going to need someone to implement the roadmap. That's what Even I'm if saying, chat GPT you know? gives it to her. So it, 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 it works. Yeah. It's less work for her no matter what, you know. Okay. Let's, let's switch gears a little bit to some of your hobbies. Um, you are a roller blader, which is like a roller skater, mm-hmm. which is where you have eight wheels on, oh, the, wheels. on the on the shoes. That's what yeah. it is, right? It's or, like is it a sk- it's not a skateboard, right? It's not a skateboard. I, I do longboard, which is kind of like skateboarding. It's just a longer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know, you know <laughs> too many. This, boards. this is the problem in America. There's just too many, <laughs> too many options, <laughs> too many options because you're like, yeah, it's a roller skate, it's a roller blader, it's a skateboard, it's a uh-huh. lawn board, and then it's a what soft board? Yeah, <laughs> just p- pick one. A penny board is just too many. Too penny many. board? Yeah, okay. it's a penny board. Now I'm time. lost. I, I hate the penny boards but anyway okay um, so educate us yes so what i do i longboard um i also rollerblade and i also roller skate so longboard is really just a uh f- maybe a flatter longer skateboard is a good okay. way to think about it more stable it's good for like going downhill and things like that um but less good for like you know doing an ollie all the stunts the, all the little stunts and tricks and stuff you okay. wouldn't catch a longboarder going into a bowl or skateboard or a bowl or anything like that um, and you definitely wouldn't catch me, but, uh, I also rollerblade slash roller skate. The only difference between those two is rollerblades are going to have the wheels in a line, four wheels in a line on each foot or more wheels. You know, you, you, mm-hmm. that's up to you. Um, and then roller skating is going to have, you know, two wheels two. in front, two on the back on each foot. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing the one with the, the roller, <laughs> the roller ball. Oh, the, the the roller blade. No, okay. the roller blade is the one that is aligned on one. Yes, one. the one that's all And then what's the second line. one? Second one is roller skate. The roller skate. Yes, I, I believe that has more stable than the yes, roller blade. Way more stable, uh, in terms of like 
Like you're not going to go left and right as much. Like I can jump on them, land, and you'll just keep going straight. Right. As opposed to blades where, you know, any little shift in your body weight and you go turning in that direction, essentially. So how did you get into skating? School. Funny enough, uh, I think a lot of kids here would get like a bike or something um, growing up. And we did have bikes in my place, but uh, for some reason I got roller rollerblades. Um, I think. Can you ride a bicycle? I can ride a bike. I can. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be funny if I if I just only rollerbladed and never learned the bike. But uh, I definitely didn't ride them as much as I feel more comfortable on rollerblades than I do on a bike. Actually, um, bikes sometimes feel a little, just a little different. I like being on my own two feet. But uh, yeah. So I started rollerblading when I was really young, um, maybe like seven or eight. Uh, and I had some friends in the neighborhood. We just, every day they knock my door. He's like, hey, you want to come outside? And I'm like, yeah, let me just put on my rollerblades. They'd have their scooters either or a bike or something like that, and we'd just be going around in circles in the neighborhood, hanging out in the backyards, that kind of deal. Yeah, well, the only reason I knew this is because I follow you on Instagram, and I've seen some of your really mm-hmm. cool videos, and it seemed like it was during the pandemic you started to, like, Oh, get back into get it. Get back into it. Absolutely. And... I, I definitely stopped for a long time, like not intentionally. Um, just life. Like, just life. You know, my skates broke. I looked up how much a new pair was. By the, when they broke, I didn't really have any money. I was broke. So <laughs> <laughs> my skates are broke. I'm broke. So I just, uh, I just stopped. Um, but then pandemic came around. The stimmy hit. And we all know what goes down there. You know, um, I said, let me just put a little bit of money towards some good skates, which I did. Um and weirdly enough, Instagram Reels just started as a as a concept at that time. Um, so I posted my first one. Instagram was just boosting them up. So I got a whole bunch of little internet points and I was like, wow, look at all these likes. <laughs> and I think that motivation really sparked me to keep on recording and uploading and stuff. So. You see what the algorithm is doing AI, to us. AI, really. AI is taking over, <laughs> changing our behavior. This is interesting. Okay, that's cool. Maybe one of these days, one of these days in my lifetime, you put me on a roller. Oh, roller skates. blade or roller skates? You yeah. want to like ride them? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. know just a spot too. They do rentals, please. Okay. It's an outdoor rink in DC. It's great. All right. I I promise I will fall. <laughs> that's okay. That's part of it. I promise to fall, but I think it would be nice. I'm, I want to try new things. Sing, being that we're like at the end of 2023 i'm thinking mm-hmm. you know this is a good time to start to set goals and absolutely um what's that thing you do at the beginning of the year oh uh new year's resolution yes resolutions for mm. 2024 so um check back with us next fall to see if i have actually been on a <laughs> I, I really want to do some things i want to do mm-hmm. rock climbing i know that there are some gyms out here that do mm-hmm. offer some rock climbing on rock climbing and then uh, yeah at least one time I've never been on a roller skate. Yes. I'm no. not going for the bleeds. Please that I'm really do. being careful about my words here. Yeah. What's your shoe size? Um, I'm a European 42 and an American 11. Women's 11. Women's 11. Yeah. There's a slight chance you fit my quad, my, my skates. Okay. Um, just, you know, just maybe. And if you do, then that's simple. We don't have to go anywhere or rent it. All just, right. just, just pull up or maybe I'll come up. Maybe I'll come up to the studio with, uh, with and my we skates. Can do so, yeah, yeah. Find some spot nearby. There's a, there's a good, um, there's a parking lot. There's a, uh, there's all sorts around. Yeah. Parking lots are ideal, you, you know, just an empty old parking lot. And yeah. you'll be okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Now let's talk about, we talked about AI, which we'll probably come back to at some point. We talked about you skating um, and you are from a musically inclined family. Absolutely, absolutely. So fun fact, tell us who your sister is. Famous in Nigeria. (laughs) See, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, (laughs) my sister is uh, RSA Mukpai, winner of the the Voice Nigeria, the very first Voice Nigeria, I believe. I'm not actually sure about that. Um, But no, no, yeah. uh, The whole family is pretty musical. Uh, You know, just just with my brother, obviously we're we're in his studio right now recording this, but uh we are in the salon though. We're actually in the salon. Just use your imaginations. Um and you know, my, my dad just enjoys music as a whole. I, I don't I don't think that he plays as much, but you know, I remember he would always be whenever I'm around him, he would be whistling, singing something. Um and generally just creative people around me. So 
definitely have leaned into the music side of things. How many instruments do you play? I play, I, I can really only like confidently say I play piano. Okay. Um, I do dabble with guitar, you know. Uh, I <laughs> failed terribly at violin at some point in my life, but one day I'll go back. So I do not play violin, but I will. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, mo mostly, mostly uh, piano, I would say. So you see, when, when I think about what you're saying, I cannot play any instrument. I cannot sing to save my life. But your brother, E, has been very kind to launch my music career because, you know, I was in the intro to his new summer track. Oh. Chop Chop. Wait, really? I did not. You didn't know it was me? You didn't tell me, no. That was me. I didn't know. Whoa. You've got 10 seconds to get to the dance floor. Yo, I that, had no idea. That, oh, come on. That was a day of luck. I'm going to listen it again because I need to, I need to <laughs> properly observe that. I think that's as much music I'm ever going to do in my life. <laughs> that, I mean, that's more than a lot of people have done. You're on you, a track. You know, I'm on a okay. track. You're on stream. Yes. And so if you haven't heard this track, I will put links to it in the show notes. I think that's mm -hmm. what they call them now. But I'm on the track. I mm -hmm. do the intro. I give you 10 seconds to get to the dance floor. Nice. You know? Where, <laughs> so, where, where are your royalties? Are you getting paid for this? Is I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting paid in studio time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, we play the piano and do you sing as well? You sing. Yeah, sing we, said, well. we said you're a vocalist, a rapper, a singer. And so this is just naturally at home. It's a singing family. You know, sometimes you watch TV and everybody in the house is like singing. Yeah. The cool stuff like that. That's very much it. I mean, back when there was more people in the in the house all the time, you know, I'd play some piano. E would pop into the living room, start singing some melody. Uh, Arce would come downstairs, you know, singing some top end something. I don't even know. <laughs> uh, even my sister, Sefe, who swears she's not musical, We'll come and start banging a beat and then you know we just have a whole party going on and that was a, a regular scene at the house i would say that sounds fun it sounds exciting it sounds like a movie already yeah, no, <laughs> definitely a fun time I, when i look back i'm like really grateful that, that that could be a normal occurrence you know i took it for granted at the time but uh but now you know so but now do you play music just for fun or are you taking it seriously is <sighs> you know Define seriously, you know. Do you mean like, am I playing music to 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 make a living off of? Or? You know, sometimes like if AI is coming, well, even AI can probably generate music itself already. Oh, we can. Oh, it definitely can. <laughs> so, but I'm like, what do you want to do with your music? Is it something you're just like having fun with it, or for for me personally, it's just, it's more like something that I can't I can't really stop doing, um, and. Yeah, I, I think that's just in a sense that like no, no matter what, I, ideas like musically are always coming to mind and ignoring those feels kind of like, uh, it kind of feels like um, if you have something you really are, like you have to do, like like I have to eat, you know, and mm -hmm. my stomach keeps grumbling and I'm grumbling and grumbling, eventually that's gonna, it's gonna hurt me mentally, you know? Yeah. So I, I must- You have to let it out. I must make it, I must let it out somehow. Um, otherwise, I just find myself being a generally dreadful person. So what kind of music are you drawn to to making? Mm. Definitely uh, is dependent on, you know, my state of being at the time. Uh, I know in some parts of my life I've made, you know, deeply depressing music. That's just I don't even like going back and listening to. <laughs> yeah, know? that's natural. I'm, uh -huh. I'm, even though I grew up in Nigeria, my favorite genre is alternative rock and mm -hmm. all the breakup songs. And I think we oh, all know yeah. why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, they, they all, they, they hit, you know, I, mm -hmm. they really, I, I like songs that really It speaks to your soul. You. Yeah. You know, um, some white breakup, those rock white breakup songs are really like really deep. You they know? get it. They get it. They get it. So, you know, especially the ones that just really yell and let their heart out. I'm just like, you guys get it. Um, and I think that's what music is for. Uh, yeah. So, but, but I definitely like to just, I, I like to feel out where I'm at at that time. You know, I, I never like to go in to the studio and be like, uh, today's the day I make a hit song or something like that or make a pop bop or something it's like if i'm feeling up and ready to make a pop you just song, put it out there that's what i got but uh like 
you know, I've been doing like kind of a song a day challenge for myself recently. Oh, and since your sister was on a reality music show in Nigeria, do you ever think like you sign up for one of those and maybe pursue <laughs> pursue mm. that talent? I had one moment where I thought I would. That was like Netflix had something called a. Uh, it was like a, a just like the voice or something, but it was for rap rap artists. I don't know what it was called again, but like Cardi B and like Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg were the judges and things like that. Okay. Um, that was the only time that I half considered joining one of those. But in reality, they're not for me. I mean, I don't think my goals in music have much to do with like winning some competition to now sign with a label I probably don't want to be signed with anyway. Um, and although I do like those competitions, I do watch them. <laughs> Uh, I They're just fun. Yeah, they are a lot of fun. I just don't think I would I would enjoy anything about being there myself, really. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, let's um, maybe you get to wrap for us before the end of this episode. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. But one quick question for you: You're wearing a nice T-shirt that's kind of Halloweenish that says "Hollywood for blood sucking goals." Yes, indeed. What is happening? <laughs> so. This uh, T-shirt is actually the first piece of merch we just got. I have a um, a duo with my friend, me and my friend Pat, called Brood X, and our Halloween album this year is called Hollywood for Blood Sucking Ghouls. It's actually to be coming out on October twenty sixth. Wow, cool! All right, so when do I get my T-shirt? Ooh, well, you can actually buy one at the listening party on Friday the 27th, which is going to okay. be happening at Hades in D.C. All right. Look at me. I'm going to be <laughs> hanging up with the Zillennials. Please do. Please. <laughs> and um, so this is about um, 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 what? Halloween. So, there's a weird guy with funky ears on it. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on in this album. But to to put it the simplest way, I guess, it's uh, it's about... A over ambitious, um, an over ambitious child growing up in a terribly violent and ghoulish world. <laughs> Isn't that the capital? This is the capital. Yes, indeed. This funny enough, this title is a play on a a term for DC. Some people call DC Hollywood for ugly people. Oh. So the person who designed this uh, had that in mind when they went ahead and kind of flipped it and called it Hollywood for blood sucking ghouls a little okay it's a little scarier you know all right yeah like you know I'm I'm still Nigerian so we don't mess with like ghosts and <laughs> juju and all yeah. this Hollywood, you know Halloween things <laughs> and you know it seems kind of scary I will wear the t-shirt I will come <laughs> to the listening party and I think I'm going to do a very nice hairstyle for you and that listening party so let, let's do it I'm all for it fantastic let's Thank just leave much. the blood sucking goals in the <laughs> yeah. capital they will stay in the capital <laughs> they, they will not follow us out of that night that is for sure alright but let's switch gears a little bit you were born in America actually I don't even think we kind of said that we just assumed yeah. everybody knows where our location is. <laughs> yeah, that, that's very true. You actually introduced myself. I didn't even say where I was well, born. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> where we, we it's chair conversations. We're at the salon. We know where we are. Exactly. <laughs> so figure it out. <laughs> um, you were born in America to Nigerian parents. You have a very Nigerian name. Um, do you have an English name? No. <laughs> I've never even considered that. That's a very funny <laughs> Yeah, I do not. Oh, well, that's cool. Do you ever think of short do you have like a short form of your name? Yes, I do have a short form of my name. So maybe that would be my English name, but um <laughs> I, I typically What's your by, full name? My full name is Abia Mose and I live for Makupai. All right. <laughs> <laughs> even as a Nigerian, I dare not repeat it. <laughs> I, I don't even I, I don't even say the name lightly. I you know I keep it keep it for when it's necessary. But um, but we've shortened all that down. You know we've gone from Abiyese to Abiyese, and then now I've finally shortened it way down to just Abi. Okay. Um, so make I, it easier. Make it real easier. That that's also my uh, artist name. Okay. Um, I think it's just nice to have a easy name as an artist um so awbi is how i now do my artist thing um and then at some random points in my life i've also just gone by ab but i, I didn't like that one it felt like my name was gone basically you know? yeah <laughs> i can imagine ab is nice Abby, well, you know? yeah. i don't like to say my full name for the record so just call me addy let's leave it like that <laughs> <laughs> um 
Uh, let's talk about you are now in your like late twenties. Yes. And in this world of so you are Gen Z. Ooh, I so I'm you, some I'm like some kind of in between millennials and Gen, Gen Z. Z. I've I've been calling myself a zillennial. I don't know if that works out here. Ah, uh, huh. that's a good word. I've been calling myself a vintage millennial because I don't think I actually <laughs> qualify with most of the other millennials, mm-hmm. uh, early millennials. So mm-hmm. we're vintage millennials or like, we're, <laughs> you know, fine wine millennials. Uh-huh. Um, and um, so you're kind of like at till end of the millennials and the beginning of the Gen Z years. So mm-hmm. that's a good spot to be in. Yeah, I and like it. Um, what is dating like these days in, in the world? In the <laughs> Let's start from there. I feel like it's it's hard to speak for the world, but in my little pocket here, uh, dating dating looks rather bleak. I'm not gonna lie. Like, do people still meet people in person? That's what I'm not so sure about. You know, I know that they do on like via like Tinder and uh, Grinder and all these different apps. Yeah, but that's not like not meeting. The, you're you're meeting the technology before you meet that, the person. You know, it's, it's interesting. I mean, you still chat on those apps and everything, but it is just different. People people. There's like a formula to speaking on Tinder. There's like a formula to hookups and all these different kinds of uh, methods of meeting people. Um, and it it very rarely happens like in any organic way these days. I don't want to sound old and I'm not old. I'm actually very young. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but do you also have, you, you have conversations with me every time you come into the studio. And I think we have great conversations, which mm-hmm. is part of the reason that inspired this podcast in the mm-hmm. first place but do regular Gen Zers and people right now in 2023 in their late 20s even have conversations in person mm. do you yeah. uh, no most certainly like and 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 I'll say this from like a place of I'm sure things can look different at times but despite all these electronics and whatnot when people are friends and they actually are, are you know, they, they really want to hang out with each other, we find a way. You know, we find we find some time to meet each other amongst the the phones and computers and Twitters and everything that we can always be communicating with each other anyway. Um, you know, we find a spot where we come together, just hang out, chat about some of this type of stuff, too. Where we're just we're just shooting, shooting the wind, you know, and just letting uh, whatever topics we have to mind come to mind, conversate. Not everything is just behind the, the screen. screen. However, a large chunk is because <laughs> how many memes am I sending to my friend before we go meet up for a hike? You know, uh, <laughs> thousands is the answer. But <laughs> yeah, I feel like um, memes should become part of a love language. You know, Absolutely. how many memes did you send me this morning? How many, <laughs> how many reels did I get? Right. You know, if 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 you don't love me, look at I don't mm-hmm. have that many on my. On mm. my line. You didn't like my last picture. Are we okay? Like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a conversation? That's a real. That's a real thing. That's a real ordeal. I I have not run into anyone who is like adamant about that, um, mm-hmm. or who is. I, but I have heard it as a joke. But you do right, know yeah, all, yeah. all these jokes. I posted. You didn't like it. Yeah, yeah exactly. You yeah. Know? And it's like every joke contains just a tiny bit of truth. So for everybody who's listening now, you just have to go to at Locitude, L-O-C-I-T-U-D-E, and like every picture because come on, <laughs> come on. You're listening to us and you didn't like the picture? Mm. You didn't like the real? You gotta like it. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so what? Dating. Let's go back mm. to dating because I'm really curious. Um, like I said, I'm very young. <laughs> Jeez, but how do you how do you navigate that world? So when not only um, am I possibly a good decade older than you are, but I also grew up in a country that was a little bit more backward than America in those days. Because mm. like in my time, I would say when I was in, it was. 2001 when cell phones came to Nigeria we Mm. completely missed the the pager days so all of my high school which is equivalent of secondary school you didn't have phones Mm -hmm. or you you had landlines where your parents kind of monitored those lines it was Mm kind of still fun so I get it but you met people like more naturally mm-hmm. you kind of met people because your friend's friend your friend's brother your friend's cousin yeah. your classmates um 
And in Lagos, where I used to live, you kind of run into people at the Suya Sports and then the mm-hmm. friend of a friend. There's always that connection or your car breaks down, someone helps you fix it. Mm-hmm. So there's always that human connection. Mm-hmm. And we, where you are now, are you, do you, are you comfortable with meeting people online or do you crave to meet people through a human connection? I, yeah, I gave up on any online stuff probably back in like 2016. Um, Did you have a bad experience? Not necessarily. I just had the most uh, neutral, like so painfully neutral that you wonder why you did anything at all. You know, that you, I, I maybe I would have just had a better time enjoying my life some other way. Uh, basically felt like a waste of time. Like, like uh, two humans connected, but when, or two humans are talking on this app or whatever, but when we actually meet, we're not, we don't really have much going on. There was no energy between us. You know, you know, when you meet someone in public and maybe some random things ha- happens, you find yourself in a small conversation. You can kind of feel whether or not you guys are really gisting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think when chatting through something, I think I was on like Tinder in 2016, um, chatting through something like that, you have a little conversation, but the issue is you both all you both know is that you're looking to meet somebody. Yeah. You do not have any real feel as to whether or not this person is who you're trying to meet. So you have a little awkward conversation. You say, uh, hey, I like this thing too that was in your little picture. The mm-hmm. one little image I had into your life. I like this thing too. <laughs> so you drone on that for a little bit. And then at some point you're like, hey, let's go get Chipotle. You go get your Chipotle. And it's just a bland time because you two were never really meant to meet any pars- real way. You just happen to swipe each other on this thing. But you, you know? see, I don't completely agree. Mm-hmm. So I'm a little bit more conservative or I like to think so. And when the, the idea of swiping left and swiping right on somebody's picture for me was like, why would you even do that? Mm-hmm. It doesn't really make sense to me. And I have a lot of this share conversations and I one of my clients had told me she had met somebody mm-hmm. online and they were in a relationship mm-hmm. and it was and I was like why would you do that like why would you just mm-hmm. meet a complete stranger and be with them and I felt like okay you know what you've not experienced this and you're being judgmental about it so mm-hmm. why not get on the app and and um see what's there before you judge people. Mm -hmm. And I do things like that to be able to connect to my clients a bit more because sometimes you have all these preconceived notions and things and perspectives, but I'm pretty open-minded and Mm -hmm. I was raised to be open-minded. So I was like, well, this doesn't sound right to me, but hey, someone's happy Mm -hmm. because of it and just check it out, see what it is. I wasn't dating anybody at the time. So I was like, hey, what's the what's there to lose right Mm -hmm. so i got on one of this um apps and i paid for a premium subscription so you could see who was matching with you so i could kind of because for me it was a little bit of an experiment Mm -hmm. and i did match with somebody and i used to run a lot at the time in Mm -hmm. my life so i had put put up my profile such that it emphasized my outdoor activities Mm -hmm. so i did match with somebody who was a runner and we did meet um he was much older. He shouldn't have been on the app because he was married. Um, <laughs> however, it was a very platonic meeting mm-hmm. and I, I wasn't looking for mm-hmm. anything per se. So I wasn't obsessed to be meeting somebody like that. And there was so much information that we shared mm-hmm. about running and my gates. There's so much I, I didn't know because mm-hmm. he had been running like, a, a marathoner and I was like I got so much information from that we did mm-hmm. not remain friends um, but that was an interesting connection yeah. that was useful yeah. so maybe it's not all we can't say we were not meant to meet because yeah, maybe yeah, yeah, we were yeah. meant to meet because of AI that's right. that's, that's actually really fair you know and I, I take back my previous statement <laughs> about like it, it's not just like oh you weren't meant to meet or anything like that um, in fact if I really think about it it's up to me at that time for not knowing exactly how to use something. In fact, I, this brings us to a great place because <laughs> all this technology, no matter what your actual opinion on it is, it's not doing anything by itself. You have to use it some kind of way. Before me, it does exactly. something. Me in 2016, what did I do? I just did what everyone else did for their profile, post a few uh, what I thought were good pictures of myself, mm-hmm. shared a little bit about myself. Um, 
But what I didn't do was specifically share some things, some some interest of mine that were specific enough that if someone else actually had was interested, it was very likely that they would actually be an interesting person for me to talk to, you know? Um, because, yeah, like I said, with the few experiences I did have, none of them were at all bad. You know, everyone yeah. was good people. Um, we just simply didn't have anything that we were both excited to talk about in any way oh, and, i'll tell you yeah. what my problem was with the apps though it just kind of like because I, I i did pay for a premium subscription for a period of a month mm-hmm. and it was a month of just literally swiping left and right mm. on what people look like because yes. first of all you're not going to look into somebody's detail of their profile if you actually don't like how they look right even though they might be they might be, yeah. They, they might be somebody who you would be attracted to if you got to know them a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But if they didn't have the right sunglasses or the right smile or the right yeah. smirk or the right photo Suddenly or the right angle, like, like swipe left to swipe yeah. right. And there was something about that that was reductive mm-hmm. of what I thought was human nature. And I was yeah. like, I don't think it, yeah. it, it just felt, it felt sad, especially for somebody like me who's naturally met people in person yeah. and being introduced to people or, mm-hmm. or it feels weird see now. something you like about somebody and then yeah. go talk to them or someone comes up to you yeah. and talks to you instead you're not like training yourself to be like quicker to judge you know at, at least that's how i felt you know swiping left and right all day um whereas, so would you would you swipe left and right these days nah i just don't i just don't know why like um especially when i know that anyone that i'm meeting in real life now my fact this whole real life uh, online thing. I think they're all real life. You know, I think it's all one and the same. I'm not, I actually don't hold much of a separation. I think it's really all about how you approach using it. Um, But I do think, think things like Tinder or something like that specifically where you're, all you're doing is swiping left and right, mostly based on that profile picture. I do think it like kind of skews how you search for, um, you know, people you just want to meet, whether, whether that be romantically or just, people you might be interested in or actually might have something in common with um like you said like it just is it's you're now judging straight reductive, off it's yeah. very reductive and and it feels a lot better and a lot more natural for me if i just happen to be out i don't know maybe i just did a show and mm-hmm. um so I'm talking to people in the hey. crowd yeah. yeah hello you know now my it's that's a probably a bad example for me because i <laughs> strictly do not um date anybody who is interested in me based off of ability or why not oh my god that's a big attraction so Uh, like for someone like me who can't sing cannot play any instruments and all of that Mm -hmm. i've oftentimes been attracted to people who have abilities that i don't have Mm -hmm. because i don't know if it makes any sense but it almost feels like that person will complete me. They have yeah. a skill I do not have naturally. Mm-hmm. And then I'll be able to complete them in a different way. So maybe reconsider. It, may- <laughs> it makes sense on paper, but in actual practice, it can it can be a little iffy because I, I, I've had one too many experiences where someone is almost trying to trick me into hanging out with them. Because of your ability. Because they're, they're, because they're saying uh, like, the, like something like... Uh, uh hey come teach me piano or something like that and i'm like sure we'll do it at lunchtime like i'm I'm thinking back in like high school even we'll do it at lunchtime and you come to the situation that person is not actually trying to learn piano piano. and i'm like that i i don't mind that but i wish you didn't come with that approach you know yeah i get Um, you i get what you mean though i get what you mean but mm -hmm. i I still feel like there's a space for I think there's no hard or fast rule to how no, this thing works. No, there's definitely a space for it. If someone came and was impressed or something like that, mm-hmm. um, whether they want to learn it or not, or just saying, hey, you did really good, that, that's perfectly fine. I'm not like, oh, you liked me? I'm <laughs> not don't want you. I don't want you. No, no, it's not like that. It's not like that. It's really more so when it's like, um, like my one selling point with them is this thing. Or or the reverse where it's like maybe they were trying to use that thing as like an in and I'm like the in the, in either case it's kind of skeevy I don't I don't want anything to do with it but you know things do change things do change. So speaking of AI dating, I know we've gone all about the place roulette pleasing and all of that, but there's one thing that just came to mind, and this conversations are as random as we have them in the salon. <laughs> we're basically talking <laughs> no, about everything and nothing at the same time. So. 
there have been shows where you can find your perfect match. Mm. I can't remember the name of the shows. I should have Googled it before <laughs> before we started the podcast. Like we talked about it briefly mm-hmm. and I was like, don't talk about it so we could talk about it on the podcast. <laughs> then I ended up not Googling it. But there's this show, she had it has Shiv from Succession. She was on like one of the episodes of it. But I've seen two different shows. Mm. I think one of them is called The One. Hey, don't take my word for it. But anyway, it says you could take a test. Mm-hmm. And you can find the perfect match. And I think it, it kind of sells the fact that there's one person in the world mm-hmm. that's for you. Mm-hmm. And if you if that person has put in their DNA to the system and you have your DNA, then they can find a 99.9999% mm-hmm. match that that person is for you. Mm-hmm. And the shows kind of sell it in like, when you meet each other, you are completely in love. Mm-hmm. Everything is, you, you, you just fit with that person yeah, perfectly well um do you think that could become our reality i from from a from, from a very realistic place yes <laughs> like i don't think um attraction and and uh how do i put it immediate satisfaction when you're meeting someone is so complex that AI cannot learn to put what people thing? together. Yeah, to, to figure out what will spark somebody, what what will activate that spark. Because it's not it's not necessarily about um, feeling like this is the healthiest person for me or who is going to help me elevate you know both our lives to the highest point. It's really how complete do you feel when you meet this person? How how much are you activating each other? Which can also lead to ascending heights and whatnot. But I don't think that that spark is uh, as complicated a thing as um as it might feel you know what i mean yeah i agree with you i think where the shows kind of put it is just trying to say there's this one person for you Mm. and i think from a show perspective it's more interesting because you have people who are in marriages for like 20 years Mm. and then they take the test and then they happen to find their soulmate Uh who they meet and of course because you are meeting under the circumstances where you have been told that you are supposed to love each other of course Mm -hmm. the first instinct is it's to love each exactly, other. Exactly. So it becomes a very complex situation. But from how you've described it, I think there's a future whereby we could actually use AI to narrow down the partners. Like you could, I don't know. Mm. But with the, uh, there's two things though. There's AI, which you can trick because if you give it certain it's just like catfishing on the internet, right? <laughs> <laughs> you could create a whole profile that mm. someone's going to love, yeah, which absolutely. is not you. So that's one thing. But I think this is playing on DNA as well. It's mm. just saying that genetically speaking, mm-hmm. innately you have a match somewhere mm-hmm. through your... Do you think that's... Yeah. <laughs> I definitely think it's possible. I don't know. Even if it was legitimate, I'm not sure that I would jump into the to the pot. Um, but I do think it's somewhat possible. I, I don't think it's going to be like, you know, I, I, th- I feel like it's pretty hard to define what the perfect match actually is because everyone is looking for something completely different. But if that's all coming together within your DNA and and, and uh, uh, whatever your answers were on the test, you know, all, everything going back and the AI can really put all that together. You know, I don't see why not, because I, I do think there is someone out there for you that will really feel like that soulmate level. I do believe that there's someone out there. Um, yeah. This well, is so yeah. complex. Yeah. I feel like we're getting out of our scope of understanding, <laughs> but it's always a tra- very interesting conversation Definitely. regardless. Um, yeah, maybe there's someone out there. Maybe there isn't. I don't know. Mm. I really don't know for sure. But maybe, maybe you're going to teach the computer how to get us to, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, <laughs> to, to learn to love each other. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. All right, we kind of gone talked a lot of on a lot of things. Do you have any questions for me? I mean, I've been asking a lot of questions. Ooh. <laughs> Dang, suddenly no, I was fine before, but I'm like questions. This is what you've been doing this whole time. You had to think of questions. Um, though this is your first podcast of 2023, uh, can I hear about your plans going forward with the podcast now that it's kind of starting back up again? Okay, so we see how usually actually don't even look at how many people are watching it and um i should answer your question but before i answer your question i should say that a lady bookie 
came to the salon the other day and she said she listened to a podcast. Oh, wow. She never knew anything about Locutude. She had just gone online and Googled like, oh, there must be somebody out there doing a podcast with locks. And she kind of was close enough to the Silver Spring location and she came. So that's like an indication that I should continue this in some way or form it's doing something for somebody out there and um for the rest of the year i'm hoping to speak to more people i do have a couple of interesting guests lined up um i hope to speak to a professor of african-american studies or african studies actually and she's into african religious worship and Mm. things like that that would be also very interesting um it's interesting that you bring that up Because one of the reasons I'm back doing the podcast this quarter is that this episode is going to be released on the fourth anniversary of my dad's passing. And I always like to do something to just memorize that Mm -hmm. day. And I felt I wanted to do something productive. So it would be interesting to work out. And my father happened to be an Ogun worshiper, which is one of the African, Yoruba African Mm -hmm. religions or gods. So it would be interesting to to speak to somebody who studied about it. So that's one of the future ones. Um, I have a guest who is going to, who, who when she comes to the salon, we talk a lot about marriage mm-hmm. and um, how that relationship is complex and joining your life to somebody else's life. Mm-hmm. So I hope to speak to her as well. And then I have a radiologist who is into real estate and fast cars. I think he's going to be completely oh. amazing. I want to be his best friend so that I can know <laughs> how to get myself a Ferrari. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> those are some of the things that I'm looking at um, with just having those conversations. And um, I feel that I have met fantastic phenomenal people across two continents now but in nigeria and in america like for instance your sister started off doing her hair at the lagos salon Mm -hmm. and i did not have a tv in lagos not because i was poor because i didn't want one i was just trying to manage technology i don't even know where i am anymore now i watch tv a lot Mm -hmm. but i did not own a tv i gave my tv where i never watched tv I would just rely lightly on social media and I used to read the news to know what was going on. Mm-hmm. So I, n- I did not watch the show. Mm-hmm. I did not know who she was. Um, and I think she had uh, her natural hair mm-hmm. um, loose. So the person who did her hair kind of called me and said, oh, I really wants to lock her hair. I don't know why her hair is so beautiful, but I said she should come to you. And I'm like, who's that? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, okay, so she comes and then I get to meet her. And I think she tells me she was on this show. I was like, Oh, hold on. And I Googled her. I was like, Oh, you won. Oh, <laughs> cool. Oh, all right. And um, she's amazing. And she did not even speak to me before telling you and your brother that, Hey, Ade is in, in, in America, mm-hmm. go book. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> it was a blessing. Cause literally it was like my first week of uh-huh. opening the salon. And I was like, nobody's going to come. And I wake up that morning and I see, mm-hmm. Two people. I'm like, who are these people? Is this a scam? Nah, well, she what's told, happening? She told us and we were in immediately. <laughs> so, and that, that's a whole year ago now. Over a year ago. Mm-hmm. No, that's two years ago. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah, that it's was in that 2021. Long. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. So I meet amazing people and I have these conversations. And the structure of Lockitude US is such that it's one-on-one. At the Lagos Salon, the conversations are usually shared amongst more people. Mm -hmm. So you have people who have met in the salon and formed friendships and a bond. And I miss that. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that the podcast also helps to share some of these conversations that are useful Mm -hmm. with other people like they would have if we had a bigger salon and more stylists and more clients in at the same time. But I, I, I have had amazing conversations over the years. I know I'm going off on a a whole tangent right now. Like I like to talk, uh, but there was one time in Lagos when the salon was really small. Um, there was a lady who came to do her hair, Damola, and she was supposed to be going for a wedding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there are other people in the studio. We're all women. And we started talking about sex toys mm-hmm. and the conversation got very interesting Damola did not make it to that wedding. <laughs> Those are the kind of conversations <laughs> that we have at Lucky Seed Studio. So we talk about everything and anything. And I learn. I, I feel exposed most of the time. Like I have this whole worldview. But every time I'm meeting somebody new, I'm learning something I knew nothing about. I, 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 
I actually would have called you data analyst until we had this conversation again, even though we've had this conversation several times in the studio <laughs> itself. But I knew a little bit more that there's some guy out there teaching the computer to be smarter so that I can use ChatGPT better, okay. <laughs> <laughs> which I appreciate, but I feel like, oh, you're selling us humans out. Anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah, those I'm are sorry, my plans. Bro. I'm hoping the, the conversation is useful to somebody. And if anything at all, at least the moments we share in the salon on the chair is therapeutic for you as a client and also therapeutic for me mm -hmm. as your stylist. So, yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Are we good? Yes, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was worried for a second. We're okay. Okay. All right. I guess that's bring, that, that brings us to the end of this episode. It was fun. I think we've probably done almost an hour. If fun. we haven't done an hour, we're very close. But this was fun. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. And um, let's see when we, maybe maybe we could get, I, I would find, I'll find something to do on Instagram to make this happen. Mm -hmm. uh, such a short time though. Now I'm blabbing. But I was going to say, we need you on your roller. We need some 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 clips of you on the clip. roller blades on the roller skates and then maybe we'll have a comeback when you put me on one uh -huh. I, uh, I got i've you. not I been got online you. lately but yeah like personally i've not been putting myself online uh -huh. out there but yeah i will put myself online if i get mm -hmm. on a i mean i probably have the skates and if i have right a now. wonderful fall that would be even more awesome <laughs> imagine the likes don't do it for the likes though don't do it for the likes why what are we living for what are we living for instagram for mark zuckerberg we didn't even talk about any of that and you know and, and treads and I, I haven't are you on treads on treads like the oh, oh, instagram yeah. treads. Oh, I'm, I'm not for some reason i just said i don't need it i don't know what else i could do there you know yeah you really is a nano yeah, yeah. that's what you call it right <laughs> yeah. Zillennial, yes. Zillennial, yeah see so. I, i'm on twitter but i even that is now turned into x.com and it's not even what i thought what it was before so i don't even know where i'm supposed Did to it change now. It, it is slowly changing a bit. It hasn't really changed too much in function, right? Um, only the name changed and uh, and who is actually running it. But what you can do on there is still mostly the same. Um, but little things are different, and I'm not liking how it's shifting. Um, it's almost like it. They, it's almost like they've now incentivized people to uh, just say inflammatory things. To mm -hmm. get views because now people are actually being paid on Twitter, oh, which is really? the, which is the real big difference between Elon Musk buying it and and before before no one was getting paid for anything on Twitter. Yeah, you just said what you wanted to say. Said what you wanted to say, and people said crazy things all the time, mm -hmm. but not necessarily for the purpose now, where everybody is just commenting ridiculous things, posting inflammatory things just to get some views. And some, well, I, some I still sense. have a Twitter account. I haven't used it in years. I got off Twitter. I, when, when I say I got off, I just kind of deleted the app from my phone because I'm technically still on. It, my, my data is still there. Uh, I got off Twitter in 2020 during the end SARS uh, oh. protest in Nigeria. And I did not have a very popular opinion. Mm -hmm. And I, I, felt, I felt strongly different than the majority of the people there. And I just felt like there was a lot of us talking on this platform and nobody was listening to ourselves. Nobody was rationalizing what was going on. Nobody was really giving thoughts. We're just driven by the attention that we were getting from this app. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was in an episode of Black Mirror. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm done. I'm not doing this. Like sometimes online, no one really, it feels like everything people are saying doesn't really hold in any water. People were just saying it to 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 be loud and say their opinion, whatever. There's it is. Literally, an episode of Black Mirror on mm -hmm. about Twitter, right? Was Twitter wasn't that episode? I don't know if it was, it was probably called something different, but I I know what you're talking about. There was one. Is it the one where like people themselves were being liked or disliked? Or no, one? this was the one where people were. You kind of got somebody hated in the nation. I believe that's the name of that episode. Nation, you, the you, oh. the one with the bees. With the bees, yes, the one with yes, the bees. That was a Twitter and everybody actually, yes. who had. Um, done the hashtag ended up dying from the bees and uh, yeah. I felt like in that period in that moment I was like have you all watched Black Mirror? <laughs> You're all gonna die. Go home. <laughs> but anyway well 
I know we've ended this podcast like twice already, but this is how it happens on the salon. Yeah. We kind of have the conversations and we have them again and uh, try and walk out the door. I forget to collect money sometimes and they're like, oh, I've not paid you. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, Abiyase is getting his next um, hair appointment on the house. So Ooh. thank you, Lockitude, thank for you, sponsoring Lockitude. us. And thank you very much, Abiyase. This was fun. Thank you, Ade. I will happily come back anytime. All right. So thank you very much for listening to the Talking Locks with Lockitude podcast. My name again is Ade Balugun. And this episode has been put together by E, the mastermind. I just want to say, um, you know, Daddy, I miss you. It's been four years now. And I hope you're resting. Good night. Good night, everyone.